Hello everybody. I would like to talk to you briefly about uh, Orangeburg pipe and infiltration and exfiltration. Orangeburg pipe came about during the Second World War when the US government redirected all the cast iron to be used for armaments. So clay pipes were still being used for the larger diameter pipes under roads but for residential sewer pipes we had to come up with an alternative pipe and believe it or not the alternative we came up with, with was a material made of paper fiber and tar mixed together and then turned into a pipe and that pipe was then manufactured in a city called Orangeburg in Pennsylvania and since then of course the pipe has been named Orangeburg the trouble with Orangeburg is that the tar is slowly dissolved by solvents such as nail polish remover or paint thinners that are poured down the drains. So the bottom of the pipe where the fluids run becomes very soft, it begins to bubble up and it cannot support the above line pipe. So the weight of the earth pushes the pipe into an oval shape, uh, like an egg shape, and eventually the pipe will collapse. Further, uh, the pipe becomes porous over time. So when we run our video cameras down the pipe, we'll see just, you know, feet, hundreds of feet of curtains of roots just hanging down the pipe, not where the pipe is broken or where it's cracked, but just simply where the pipe is porous along the entire length of pipe. So Orangeburg pipe is something we reline a lot. And the interesting thing is when we inflate our liner to 30 or 40 PSI, we can get rid of the ovality of the Orangeburg pipe and turn the pipe round again. So it actually it's a, it's a very good candidate for pipe relining. The other question we have a lot uh, that occurs is, is infiltration and exfiltration. People call us and say, you know, what are we going to do about the exfiltration? We have cracks in our pipes, the water's leaking out into the environment, the EPA is on our case, what do we do? Well, we can reline those pipes and get rid of the exfiltration permanently. Infiltration as well. In some cities like St. Petersburg and Miami that are along the coastline in Florida, the water table is very high. It's above the level of the pipes. So if the pipes have any leaks, water leaks into the pipe, not out. Now that shouldn't be a problem, except it is a problem for the city sewage treatment plants. When the water table is high, the volume of water they're going to process at the facility is double or triple the regular volume. And of course they use a lot more chemicals and manpower and equipment to clear the water. So infiltration is a huge issue for them and over the last uh, five years they have collectively, those two cities alone, have collectively lined over 5,000 laterals between themselves. They actually own their own equipment and will go from house to house and reline the pipe going from the house to the sewer main line under the road. And uh, those are the two things I wanted to tell you about. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.